Now, let me welcome uh, Ganeshji for the keynote session. Namaste, Ganeshji. Over to you. Namaste. Namaste. <laughs> welcome. Welcome, everybody. Yeah. So, we'll continue with our uh, discussion in the last monthly meeting. <clears throat> Yes. Can you share this uh, PPT, Abhishek uh, Kumarji? Ji, sir. So, <clears throat> out of these uh, three parts of uh, this monthly meeting, uh, I have to uh, address to this personal transformation for societal transformation. We have been uh, talking about the, can we move to the next slide, Kumarji? Yeah. So in essence, what we have talked Till now that I will just try to sum up and then continue with the discussion. So essentially, as a human being, we all want to live, live with fulfillment and live with continuous fulfillment. And in order to do that, we need three things. We need physical facility. We need relationship with human being and we need the right understanding. So ultimately, three things we require. The right understanding. No, no, we are going a little faster. Can we go, go back? Yes. So, <clears throat> we need right understanding in the self, fulfillment or relationship with human being and physical facility with rest, rest of nature, which ultimately leads to mutual happiness and mutual prosperity, which is the goal of each one of us as a human being. <clears throat> and when it comes to right understanding, it has to do with understanding the harmony at different levels, starting from human being to family to society, nature and existence. So if we are living with all these three in the right priority, we are living with human consciousness and that is what is desirable. <clears throat> if you look at the whole uh, kind of uh, society today and the concept of development, Essentially, we are living with animal consciousness with the feeling that it is physical facility which ultimately counts. And if we have enough physical facility, next slide. If we have enough physical facility, everything else will be taken care of. So if we go with this belief, then we are living with animal consciousness or in human consciousness. And ultimately, we want to go to this human consciousness. So this transformation from animal consciousness to human consciousness is what is desirable and that is what we are working for. So the purpose of human education and what we are doing through USB is essentially to make this transformation possible from animal consciousness to human consciousness. Yes. So if you look at the whole process and look at the existence, we can see that the whole existence is in the form of coexistence and which is expressing itself in the form of nature. And all this expression up to this human order has already taken place without any active participation from us as human beings. So 99.99% of what has to happen has already happened. Given all this, given the human order, now what we have to do is to work for right understanding, right feeling and right thought, and ultimately for right human conduct, definite human conduct. So that is the role that human being has to play. Next. Yes, sir, in, there is a question in between by Ambaji. Yeah, what uh, can we get some examples of right understanding? 
we'll come to the questions i think later yes, sir. When, yeah so what is marked as yellow here has already happened and this violet color thing is what we have to do as a human being and we can see that this is <clears throat> what exactly is the development it is. so the development has to take place through human being in the form of right understanding right feeling right thought and definite human conduct yes so which essentially would mean that the existence is by way of coexistence harmony in and relationship and i as human being has a natural acceptance for this coexistence harmony and relationship and therefore if we put it together my role as a human being in this existence is to understand this coexistence harmony and relationship and live by this coexistence harmony and relationship so it is already there in existence the whole existence is by way of coexistence harmony and relationship i already have natural acceptance for coexistence harmony and relationship so what i have to do is to understand this coexistence harmony and relationship and live by this coexistence harmony and relationship and if i do that this is how it looks like on the right block starting from my realization of coexistence to my authentication in the form of participating in the universal human order all this put together is what is my role in this existence and if i complete this role then the expression the process of ex expression of this coexistence will be completed so at the root of it is the coexistence and as the final expression of it is the universal human order and the human tradition which is completed through the human being yes next next yeah so this is what <clears throat> is the role of human being this is what is living with human conduct and this is what is the self development and its expression ultimately leading to human society so this is the description of what i have to do as a human being what is my role in this existence and this is something that we are trying to work for and we will <clears throat> talk about this in quite detail in fact if you look at most of the discussion that we are having and we'll have in the future sessions will be you know around this uh, particular uh, expression of uh, human conduct so we'll talk about contemplation understanding realization in detail we'll talk about how our imagination desire thought and expectation would expectation would look like in the light of this realization of coexistence harmony and relationship and then how would be our behavior work and participation so all those detailings we are going to uh, talk about <coughs> one by one today for example we will talk something about this contemplation understanding and realization okay how we can start this process within our own self yes so we also talked about this human goal at the individual level at the societal level and at the national level so at the individual level we all want to ensure living with human consciousness ultimately leading to happiness and prosperity in continuity and this can be <clears throat> seen through this graduate attributes that we have been talking about this will be the expression of full human potential <clears throat> at the level of 
society these four goals have been identified and if we ensure the fulfillment of these four goals we will have an equitable and just society at the level of nation we will have harmony within the nation and we will work in complementarity to other nations so this is how we can the, fulfill the goal at different levels. Uh, in this session, we are going to talk about self-development. In fact, for the transformation, we need all these three things, the self-development, the family and teen development, and ultimately the societal development. And societal development, we are taking a solution-centric approach and not the problem-centric approach. And in this solution-centric approach, we have these activities and projects identified you know, on which we are working as different teams. <clears throat> so here we'll focus on the self-development part. So as a part of drawing your attention towards the process of self-development and for evaluating where we are, this was one uh, thing that we were asking ourselves and trying to explore what is the center of my being? What is the main source of my happiness? Right. So if you look at the possibilities of where we can be centered around, there are the six possibilities starting from six to five to four to three, two and one. And in three, there are two possibilities, three B and three A. And two, there are three possibilities again, 2C, 2B, and 2A. If you look at the whole civilization today, what we call as modern civilization, our major focus is on physical facility. So we are at level six. So most of our time and effort and all that we do in the name of development is centered around physical facility. We don't pay attention even to our body, to the health of our body. Right? <clears throat> so we can evaluate and see whether we also, as an individual, busy with trying to get more and more physical facility or we have started paying attention to the body, to the health of the body. And further, we are able to see the importance of this sensation. Sensation is subtler than the body because the sensation has two parts. One is some incidents happening in the body. And second part is the self testing that sensation. So both body and self are involved. Then we may have focus on relationship with other, but there we can have focus on feeling from the other. That is, we are trying to get the favorable feelings from others and we consider that that is the source of our happiness. So if you look at most of your engagement, you will see that it is either around six, that is physical facility or body or sensation or feeling from the other. So as long as you are within this S1 and S2, you are going with the hope that the source of happiness is from outside and you are trying to get happiness by having a favorable condition outside or from outside either in the form of some favorable sensation or some favorable feeling. So you can evaluate yourself whether you are within this S1 and S2. That is from 6 to 3B. So 
as long as you are there you are limited to this getting happiness from outside as an effect from outside and it does not work it can never be a core source of continuous happiness so only only when you move above this 3b that is you are focusing on relationship but you are focusing on feeling from within that is you are able to see that if you have the right feeling within yourself that can be the source of happiness for you so even though focus is on relationship not on oneself but in regard to that relationship the focus is on feeling from within not from outside so if i am doing that i have control over it i can ensure the right feeling within myself and therefore i can ensure the happiness born out of this feeling within if we move to the self that is two there are three possibilities 2c 2b and 2a to see we are focusing on our imagination focusing on our feeling thoughts and expectation and if we can see that you know what feeling we have at that point and if we can make that feeling you know and line with the natural acceptance then i can be in harmony and happiness within so that can be a source of happiness for myself i can go up still to to be that is i can see my preconditioning my assumption my sanskar which is deciding for my feeling and i can observe that sanskar and i can evaluate this sanskar and i can purify that sanskar that also can be a source of happiness for me and that in fact will be a uh, longer you know uh, uh, will have a possibility of having happiness in which more stability and ultimately i can be at the level of pure observer right and if i am at the level of pure observer then this continuity of happiness can be ensured by being there right being with my natural acceptance with right understanding and from 2a or being centered at 2a now i can pay attention to the space to coexistence and when i am centered at 2a at pure observer with the realization of this space and the coexistence i can be in a state of continuous happiness so these are the possibilities of my being centered around it so we have been discussing about this and if you want to share about this or you have any question about this we can respond but let me add that we said that if we want to work on this and we want to move up from 6 to 2a and 1 one of the possible way of doing it is your exercise 1 and 2 which we have been working on right so exercise 1 and 2 is a very practical way of going about moving to the place of pure observer and then working for realization of coexistence at the level of pure observer so perhaps i would like you to respond to that uh, poll that we did already uh, how many of you have been going through the uh, uh, morning session and what has been your experience so if you have any question regarding this what we have presented till now you may ask 
question and then we can go further. Yeah. A uh, very nice discussion. I was there in Hindi session also. So, Bhaiya, uh, after attending this morning sessions, this is my fifth batch, 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th and 11th. I am finding that I am moving upwards. Initially, I was at 6, uh, then uh, 5, 4. Now, I feel I am between 3A and 3B. Means uh, having uh, this purple color, the bottom most, I am fully responsible. I am finding like that. Uh, but uh, willing to move towards this 2A, 2A, B, C. 2C, 2B and 2A. Jibai, is my sequence correct right now? Yes. Ji. Yes. Ji, ji. Ji. So earlier I was with 6 only, physical facilities and all, when I was not in touch with the UHU. Most of so us. My... <laughs> <Ji>. <laughs> <laughs> but but it's my beginning only from last two three years so i think uh, it is and since i'm having this feeling uh, relationship with the other so i can contribute this much time now today morning 5 30 i started and now doing so so thank you thanks for guiding us namaste namaste sabiko yeah. it is important you know till now as long as you are with six five and four Gee. And even 3B, your focus is on a world outside. Gee. So if you have started working with 3A, at least you are now focusing on yourself. Gee, within, within. Gee. Yes, you have taken up your responsibility. You can Gee. see that you are responsible for your happiness or unhappiness. Gee, and now you are willing to work on yourself. Gee, definitely. Yes. Thank you. So if you come to 3A, it is natural for you to go to through C, you know. Ha, ha. And then to B and to A. Yes. But it will take time, I think. It so will take time. Slowly, yeah, slowly it will come. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. G G. Namaste. Namaste Bayan. G Namaste Bayan. You can control the My question is when you are interacting with others. When they response, when they react, I am getting reaction inside. But I understand that that, that is not good or correct for me. But even then, of course, I am not reacting outside, but though I am giving some response outside, but inner feeling is there, so that reaction is there. I observed many times. But still uh, unable to overcome that point. So without moving this one ahead, uh, how to ensure the harmony in the sense? I'm not able to get your voice very clearly. Baya? Is it okay, Baya? Yeah, just place your question. When I'm interacting with others, yeah, I am getting reaction. Yeah, but I could able to observe clearly. Yes, for the past three four months. Yeah, uh, sometimes I'm giving a reaction to other uh, others, but sometimes I'm not giving outside reaction, but inside reaction is there. Yeah. So with that, I'm losing harmony. Yeah. But how to get how control, uh, complete harmony in the self? Uh, this is where I am failing by. Yeah. So when you are interacting with other, where is your focus? The focus is on the behavior of the other or your focus is on your own self, on your imagination, on your feeling, on your thought. I, I I I am getting something from favorable yeah, favorable things from others when I'm interacting from with others. Yeah. So I want to get some desired results from them. If they react then that way, I'm not getting. If they go in some other way, I'm getting reaction. Yeah. My question is that see when I'm interacting with you, for example, right? Yes, you are asking some question. Yes, when I'm interacting with you, I am focusing on my feeling, 
the feeling that I have for you. Yes, yes, ma'am. The thought that I have for you. So if I am focusing on my feeling, then first thing I'll do is I'll keep my feeling in order. Right? And if yes, I have yes, the right feeling with you, and yes, then I'm listening to your question, I will try to respond to your question rather than react. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma but if I start paying attention to your behavior without paying attention to my own feeling, then I am likely to get affected by your behavior. And I might react instead of responding. Can you see the difference? Yes, ma yes, ma that is right. Yes. So I have to work on it. Yeah, so my Thank suggestion you, would be that next time I am interacting with someone, what his behavior is, is secondary. What is primary is my feeling for him. Yes, ma'am. Yes, right. And I have to set that feeling in order. Yes, ma'am. I have to make sure that I have the feeling of relationship for him and not opposition. Yes. So if I can take care of that, then irregard of what is his behavior, I will respond and not react. Yes, bhai. Thank you, bhai. Yeah. So I ensure harmony in myself yes. while interacting with others. Yes. 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 Sir, uh, usually uh, during the uh, self-observation, uh, focusing on uh, the self, uh, during the early morning when I just wake up, uh, I could able to observe uh, there is some physical, physical chemical changes which are happening uh, uh, in some part of the body, uh, like nearby my heart or uh, lungs. At that time, uh, there are a lot of... Uh, uh, assumptions and then preconditions uh, which would have been uh, taken uh, several times before we call it as an uh, sanskar. Those things are been uh, awakened because I am not voluntarily uh, asking those thoughts to come but uh, due to some physical chemical uh, things which are happening uh, at my body uh, either it may be uh, uh, a sudden increase in the blood pressure or uh, uh, frustration which happens over that uh, at the early morning. So when I just wake up by 3.30 or 4, uh, I could be able to observe that at that time, uh, what are the sanskars we have been created with assumptions, with uh, uh, preconditioned thoughts and the feelings of opposition and uh, uh, feeling of doubt, fear. So all these things are being uh, uh, coming into the uh, my mind at the morning because I am not voluntary, voluntarily asking those things to come. But these things are coming at uh, awakened with this uh, uh, glimpse of information which I uh, could able to observe from body. Then later the thought goes over that. How to analyze this particular process? It is good. At least you are able to see now that there is some sensation going on in the body. You are able to observe that. Then you are able to observe that corresponding to these sensations in the body, there are already some sanskars, some thoughts, you know, in your mind. Right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So it is good that at least you are now able to see these two things, right? Yes, now, sir. if you keep observing without reacting to it, you will be able to see that many times this sanskar results into feeling of opposition for these sensations. And you start reacting to them. So that is where you have to be careful now. Okay, sir. Thank you. Sir. That this sanskar should not lead to a feeling of opposition for those sensations. Because if they lead to feeling of opposition, 
it will lead to unhappiness number one it may also lead to fear right and so many other things so i should be able to see that okay there are some sensation which i am able i am reading from the body corresponding to that those sensations there are already some preconditionings some sanskar and those sanskar becomes active and i may start responding or reacting based on those sanskar so if there is some reaction i am able to see it and evaluate it and don't go by it number 1 number 2 I have to make a decision as to what I have to do for this sensation. If there is some problem in the body, then I need to do something for it. So I will try doing whatever has to be done, rather than creating a feeling of opposition for those sensation, which we generally do. In fact, very unawarely we keep start reacting to this sensation. Okay. and there is lot of unhappiness within and lot of fear within right and when we start reacting to this sensation right lot of things start happening within the body so lot of suppressions take place within the body so at least i am able to see these two things right sensation and the sanskar associated with it if i can be aware and i can observe it without reaction then i can slowly evaluate what i have to do with a feeling of responsibility towards the sensation without having an opposition for the sensation i can see what i need to do to improve upon my health if it relates to some issue in the health so at least there will be no reaction there will be no worries there will be no unhappiness and i can decide and do whatever i have to do for the health of the body isn't it yes sir yes thank you sir thank you ji thank you anand ji i think we can move up to the to the content yeah so we can proceed now yeah so we I have already discussed all these uh, details about six, five, four, three, two, and one. So I am not discussing on this six, five, four. We have already discussed. Okay. Ah, three B also we have discussed. Three A we have discussed. But one important point that I want to make about three A is that when I am focusing on relationship. and on the feeling within and that relationship right my focus is still outside right focus is not on myself my focus is on my relationship with other human being but now i am concerned about the feeling within myself rather than focusing on the feeling from other so this is a major shift right so i am aware of my feeling in relationship trying to make sure that the feeling i have is naturally acceptable to me so this is interesting right that though i am focusing on my relationship with the other now i am focusing on the feeling that i have within myself and now i am asking myself whether this feeling within me is naturally acceptable to me or not naturally acceptable to me and if i do this i can see that whenever i have a feeling which is naturally acceptable to me i am in a state of harmony and happiness whenever i have a feeling which is not naturally acceptable to me it leads to disharmony and unhappiness so this observation and this evaluation is very important because gives me the clarity about what is the feeling which is natural to me and what is the feeling which is not natural to me 
so this opens my gate to contemplation so contemplation is basically trying to see what is my participation right what is my relationship with the other so here by asking this question about the feeling i have within myself i can see what feeling is naturally acceptable to me so what is my natural characteristic that i can decide that i can see what is my participation in my relationship with other human being is it a feeling of relationship or a feeling of opposition is it a feeling of trust or mistrust respect or disrespect so all these questions i can resolve here so in that sense i am awakening to my activity of contemplation so this is important this 3a is important in the sense this that this opens a gateway to the activity of contemplation so we have put this as a question is this the beginning of awakening to the activity of contemplation so look into this and find out that is this the place where you are able to decide for yourself as to what is your participation right in relation to other human being and if i can see this that this is what is natural feeling for me this is what is my natural characteristic then i can see that with this feeling i am in a state of harmony and happiness and with that feeling now i can analyze how to express this feeling and i can express it to the other so this will be my behavior which will be based on my response and not reaction so this 3a opens my way to awakening of activity of contemplation so if you look at this exercise 1 step 2 and 3 and then step 6 a there we are able to see what is our what is what are the feelings which are naturally acceptable to us and therefore we can find out what is our participation in our relationship with other human being yes then if we are in to <coughs> to see these descriptions we have already discussed to be also we have discussed the description so let's look at this to be the focus on preconditioning assumption the sanskar i am aware of my sanskar i can directly see it my feeling is based on my sanskar my sanskar could be based on right understanding or otherwise i am focused on purifying my sanskar i evaluate whether it is based on relationship harmony and coexistence or not further it can be purified by ensuring right understanding in me and i make effort to understand relationship harmony and coexistence so basically now i am focusing on my acceptances my assumptions my preconditioning my sanskar and i am asking whether my sanskar is in relation to coexistence harmony and relationship or otherwise so being focused at the level of pure observer now i am focusing on my sanskar and i am evaluating it and if i look at my sanskar and evaluate it it gets purified and this purification takes place by 
evaluating it from the point of pure observer on the basis of whether it is in line with relationship, harmony and coexistence or not. So there we can see that what is naturally acceptable to us is the feeling of relationship, harmony and coexistence. And therefore, if our sanskar is based on relationship, harmony and coexistence, then it is a right sanskar. Otherwise, it is not a right sanskar. So this evaluation leads to purification of my sanskar. So any sanskar which is in line with relationship, harmony and coexistence will continue to exist, continue to be there and it will be a source of harmony and happiness. Any sanskar which is in contrary to this relationship, harmony and coexistence will become with, you know, will start withering away and that is how our sanskar can be purified. The other way of purifying sanskar is to have this right understanding or understanding about relationship, harmony and coexistence. So through those right understanding also I can purify my sanskar. So if you look at this exercise 1 and 2 and if you are able to see the feelings, the imagination first, evaluate it, then if you develop your subtlety and you can see your sanskar directly, then <clears throat> you can evaluate your sanskar and make sure that your sanskars are in line with relationship, harmony and coexistence and not otherwise. If we can do this, this basically makes you sure that my sanskar, my acceptances are in line with relationship, harmony and coexistence. So this will be the process of awakening to the activity of understanding. So previously we have been accumulating lot of these preconditionings without evaluation of whether it is in line with relationship, harmony and coexistence or not. But now I am able to be aware of it, observe it, evaluate it and therefore make sure that it is always in line with relationship, harmony and coexistence and not otherwise. So two things are happening. Number one, by being at the level of pure observer and observing the sanskar and evaluating it, I am making sure that I don't have the wrong sanskar. I only have the right sanskar. This is what we can do in the short term. In the long term, I have to work on understanding relationship, harmony and coexistence in its completeness. So that anyway we are doing, right? We are working for this right understanding or understanding the existence in its completeness. But that takes time. But immediately through exercise 1 and 2, I can make sure that I don't go on building wrong sanskar. Right? So every moment I am able to evaluate the sanskar and purify the sanskar. So basically the process of awakening to the activity of understanding is on and I am continuing in that process of understanding which is anyway is a long way to go. So this is the second point which I wanted to draw your attention. Third, when we are at 2A, we are at the level of pure observer, right? Then I am centered at pure observer. I am aware of my natural acceptance. I am observing the lower activities of the self and evaluating them without reacting, leading to their purification. All these are happening. Now, along with this, when I am centered at pure observer, I can also pay attention to the space, right? I can pay attention to the coexistence. 
because the pure observer has the capacity to see itself, see the lower activities, evaluate the lower activities. It also has the potential to see the space and see the coexistence. So when I start paying attention to the space from the place of pure observer, when I'm able to see the space, I'm able to see the pure observer being submerged in space and fulfilled in space. That is the beginning of awakening to the activity of realization. So let me repeat this. So when I am centered at pure observer, I have the possibility or the pure observer has the possibility of paying attention to the space and to the coexistence in space. So when I am doing that from the pure observer, I am able to see the space, I am able to see the coexistence in space of the pure observer. I can see that I, the observer, is submerged in space and I am fulfilled in space. That is all my need of the pure observer are fulfilled in space. So three basic needs. One is the need for the activity, need for being energized. So I am always energized in space. I am endowed with this activity, the perennial activity in the self. Then I am self-organized in space. I as pure observer is self-organized. Right? I have this availability of knowledge in space. And therefore, whenever I pay attention to anything, including my own activity, I'm able to see them, I'm able to evaluate them. So that knowledge is available, that self-organization is available to me. And ultimately, I am also in relationship with other activity in space. My own activity and other activities in space, I can see and I can relate to it. So all those needs of this pure observer is fulfilled in space. So when I'm able to see this submergence, this my self or the pure observer being submerged in space, that is the beginning of awakening to the activity of realization. So first I'm able to see that I'm submerged in space. I am fulfilled in space. And then further I can see that every activity, every unit, is submerged in space. But this is the beginning. This my seeing that I as observer, pure observer, is submerged in space and fulfilled, fulfilled in space is the beginning of awakening to the activity of realization. And if I have that realization, then I always have this feeling of coexistence and based on that feeling of coexistence I have the feeling of harmony and relationship and therefore I express my feeling in my relationship as and when required and I always respond and not react and then coming to this one that coexistence is space. I am centered at the pure observer. I am focusing on space and coexistence. When the center of my being is coexistence and space, I am able to see myself submerged in space and fulfilled in space. I am happy in continuity, realizing the submergence, feeling related to all and feeling responsible to all. So this is interesting that if I'm able to see myself as pure observer submerged in space and if I can see that all my needs are fulfilled in space, in coexistence in space, 
Then as far as my need for continuous happiness is concerned, it is already fulfilled in space. So I'm not dependent on any other activity or any other unit. But at the same time, I'm not unrelated to them. I see that I'm not dependent on them for my happiness, but I'm certainly related to all of them because that is how the way, that is how the whole coexistence is. That everything in existence is in coexistence, harmony and relationship. Therefore, I am also feeling, I am also related to all. So I have that feeling of being related to all and therefore I feel responsible to all. And with that feeling of relationship, I expand my imagination about how to fulfill that relationship. And as and when required, I express it in my work, in my behavior and my participation. So this is where ultimately I have to reach. I have to reach to the place of pure observer with realization of coexistence, with realization of space, with this realization of submergence and fulfillment in coexistence in space. That leads to complete fulfillment in this self. And with that fulfillment, I am now feeling related to all and responsible to all. And with that, my definite, my conduct becomes definite. So now my imagination is going for the undivided society and universal human order. So if you look at the whole journey, this journey of the self from the grossest, grossest level of being to the most subtle level of being can be seen as three significant shifts. So one shift is shift from outside to partially within. Second is shift from partially within to more within. Third is shift to the pure observer within. Right? And then within that pure observer, I shift to this coexistence, realization of coexistence in space. So with this background, we can evaluate where we want to reach, where we are presently and chalk out a specific plan for our self-development. Yes. So, uh, one more question on uh, uh, Sanskar, sir. Is the sanskar is a part of uh, self, sir, or it's a different unit? Uh, sanskar is a part of self. Sanskar is a part of self. Uh, can we go to uh, the uh, later slides, uh, Kumarji, where we have talked about sanskar? This one, sir. Two further, days. further. Further. Yeah, 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 here. Yeah. So, if you uh, look at exercise one, step two, one, two, and three, we are focusing our attention on our imagination, right? This yellow block, B2. Is that clear, Anand Rajji? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm clear, sir. Yeah. So all this is part of the self. The imaging, the analyzing, the comparing, the selecting, the testing, all this, you know. So that feeling that we are talking about is at the level of imaging. So we are observing the feeling, we are evaluating the feeling from our pure observer whether it is natural, unnatural, leading to happiness, unhappiness. Then step four, we are asking this question that the feeling that we have now, how did we decide on this or who decided this feeling? And we found that ultimately it is we who are decide, who is deciding the feeling. And how do we decide it? We decide it on the basis of our preconditioning 
on the basis of our assumption, on the basis of our sanskar. So our sanskar is sitting in us only, right? So assumption that I have at this level of three, activity level three and activity level two. So in the state activity of activity level two and three. So till we have this contemplation and understanding, when we have the contemplation and understanding, we have the right, you know, feeling and right understanding. But till that has happened, we have some assumption, some acceptances, some preconditioning. This may be based on right understanding, which may not be based on right understanding. But whatever it is, we are calling that as sanskar. So this sanskar is there sitting within our own self. For example, if you have this sanskar that there is a struggle for survival and survival of the fittest. Right? This is my assumption about a human being and this is my assumption about the relationship of one human being and other human being. So this assumption that there is struggle for survival and survival of the fittest is one sanskar which is there sitting within me. So as long as I don't have the right understanding and the contemplation awakened, I go with this sanskar. So I think that human beings are always, you know, fighting and we have to have the feeling of opposition with other human beings because that is how we can survive. So whenever I see a human being, I start with this assumption, with this sanskar, and I develop a feeling of opposition for him. And that opposition shows in my imaging. Isn't it? Yes, sir. On the other hand, if we had this presumption or preconditioning that, no, no, we are all related, we are all the sons of God, you know, and what, all that, then whenever I see a human being, I will develop a feeling of relationship for him. So where is that sanskar sitting? Within me or outside me? Within, within me, sir. Within me. Yes. Uh, one more, sir. There are uh, n number of sanskars, sir. For example, we can have uh, example and just say, some n uh, sanskar. How oh, this uh, uh, self is holding all this... Uh, uh, sanskar sir, because there are, uh, there are thousands at a particular person uh, if i just see uh, uh, what are all the assumptions we have already experienced uh, before UHV, that comes into uh, immediate uh, uh, thing but now we could able to uh, respond to it instead of reaction uh, how the sanskars are being uh, present over that because at, uh, we would have just not seen them for a long period of time when we uh, observe them, immediately uh, that particular sanskar comes into uh, evolution. Because during this observation of self, uh, these are the uh, questions I just had, as I would like to share with you. Sir. Yeah, this is interesting that there are thousands and thousands of these sanskar. Right? And we have accumulated them without awareness. And not only thousands and thousands of them, there are layers and layers of them. And every layer, there are thousands of them. So when you start working on your sanskar, one layer, so many sanskar will come out. You are able to see them, evaluate them, you know, purify them. And then you feel very relaxed that, okay, now I got rid of so many sanskar and, you know, I purified those sanskar. And now I think I can always respond and not react. And then suddenly the second layer of sanskar opens up. Right? And you start reacting. Yes, sir. Yes. So all this will happen because you have accumulated them over long period of time. Right? And interesting thing is that you are not aware of them. 
you have been accumulating them without awareness. So you do not know what you have accumulated. Now that you have started becoming aware, at least you are able to see that sanskar which is active at this moment. But then there is this is only the tip of the iceberg. There is so much underwater. You know that iceberg, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This is a mountain of ice. And only the tip of it is there above the water. But if you clear that tip, then the things beyond, within will also start coming out. So that is how you have to start working on it. So we said two things, no? One is that I start handling the sanskar which is immediately active, number one. Number two, in the long run, I am trying to develop my right understanding. Okay? That is understanding of coexistence, harmony and relationship. And therefore, trying to make sure that all my sanskar now onward are in line with coexistence, harmony and relationship and not otherwise. So we are working two ways. Number one, every moment we are aware of our sanskar, evaluating them, purifying them. So even if there is a wrong sanskar, it comes out, I evaluate and it will die out. On the other hand, we are making sure that through right understanding, we are developing the right sanskar. So number one is being aware of the old sanskar, evaluating them and purifying them. Number two is working for making the right sanskar through right understanding. And ultimately through realization. So of course it is a long process, long ongoing process because we have accumulated them you know, over such a long period without being aware. Now that we have become aware, we can slowly work on them, purify them, and at least immediately if I am aware, I will not meet an accident. Yes. Indeed. Thank you, Ganeshji. Um, since we have the time is over, thank you so much for that insightful uh, session on this uh, as, uh, shift, the three sh basic shifts, and also the uh, uh, levels of uh, our happiness or the focus of our focus of our happiness. And uh, since it, uh, Time is over. We cannot take more questions on that. I think uh, we can go ahead uh, with the uh, sum up from Kumar Bhaiya. Over to you, Bhaiya. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Okay. Thank you, sir. Namaste, everyone. So, in the keynote lecture today, we started by sharing that essentially each one of us wants to lead a happy life in continuity. And for that, three things are required, right understanding, relationship, and physical facility. And if you put them in the right order, then we are able to ensure mutual happiness in our relationship with human being and mutual prosperity in our interaction with the rest of nature. So this is the real transformation, real progress for a human being. When we focus only on physical facilities, it is just like living like an animal with animal consciousness. But when we are able to ensure all the three with the correct priority, then we are living with human consciousness. Now, looking at the whole existence, we can see that everything other than human being is already in harmony. Human being has natural acceptance for harmony. Only that the human being has to ensure self-exploration so that the right understanding and right feeling is ensured, which leads to definite human conduct. And this has to happen in the self, by the self. And here only the development has to take place. Whatever activities are taking place other than this in the rest of nature, there is cyclicality involved there. Now, when I look at my role in existence with this understanding, then I can see that the existence is by way of coexistence, harmony, and relationship. 
I already have the natural acceptance for this and I only need to understand and live accordingly. So this has to happen in the self, by the self, understanding of relationship, harmony and coexistence. Now, when I ensure this, I'm able to develop as a self and the more I develop as a self, I'm able to develop the team around me and the team becomes instrumental in societal development. And we all are there in this process. We are all involved in this. We are all holding hands of each other and moving forward with this process of exploration. So at one end, we can see that we have to reach the state of realization within. And at the other end, we can see that in our expression outside, we are participating in undivided society and universal human order leading to human tradition. So when I look at the goals or the basic aspirations at the level of individual, we can see that we have to ensure happiness and prosperity in continuity, which is the full human potential. And this can be indicated by the six common graduate attributes. At the level of society, we are able to see the four human goals, right understanding, right feeling in every individual, prosperity in every family, fearlessness that is trust in society, and coexistence in nature or existence leading to equitable and just society. And at the level of nation, we can see that we all need to ensure harmony within and complementarity with other nations, which can promote national development. Now, today we focused upon self-development in the session, and we could see that there could be various centers of being, starting from six to one, and Ganeshji elaborated upon every level of being. The grossest level is the physical facility when my old imagination is centered around physical facility and I am looking all my success, happiness, aspiration around physical facility. Subtler than that is when I am able to look at the body. So I'm now moving inward from physical facility to the human being where I can take care of the body also. But again, my imagination is focused on the body and this is not going to ensure happiness or prosperity in continuity. Subtler than this is when I'm able to focus on the self uh, on the sensation because here the body and the self both are involved but still it is a kind of very gross level though a shift has taken place in me now moving forward i am able to focus on feeling but here again it may be two possibilities here like i may be trying to fetch favorable feeling from others to ensure happiness in me but again here i am dictated by others my source of happiness remains outside, whether I am trying to ensure happiness through sensation or feeling from the other. But if I'm able to see that ultimately the feeling has to be ensured within, then only the happiness can continue. So another shift has taken place in me. Now, again, even though I am able to see the need for ensuring the feeling within, I still need to work upon myself. So now I get gradually focused upon the self. So here again, I can focus on the imagination when I am able to be aware of my feeling, thought and expectation. And I can see that something is driving my imagination. So earlier, I was not able to even observe my imagination and I was just trying to fetch something from outside for my happiness. Now I am trying to be observant of my imagination, but I can see at a subtle level that ultimately my imagination is being driven by my own acceptances my preconditionings, assumptions, or that can be called as sanskar. So gradually I start becoming aware of my sanskar. And from here I have to take another shift as a pure observer. When I can see my natural acceptance clearly and I am able to ensure right understanding within me as a pure observer. But here again, I need to see the basis for relationship, harmony and coexistence for which I have natural acceptance. Then I gradually I am able to focus on coexistence or space. So this is the way I am developing as a self, ensuring the continuity of happiness within, ensuring the completeness of activities within me. So this is what we discussed in the session today. So there are three shifts which were elaborated upon. Shift one is shift from outside to partially within. Shift two is from partially within to more within. And shift three is shift to the pure observer, shift completely within. So this is how we all are trying to develop as a human being. And if you look at the complete program, 
for value education it is essentially to ensure these shifts in every human being of the mankind so this is what we share today this is all as a sum up for today ji thank you uh, kumar bhaiya for that uh, very uh, comprehensive sum up of what we have discussed as the keynote session thank you